I'm James Gibson. Welcome to JG1. We are here to present in class, and today we are talking about self-efficacy, and then we're talking about the id, the ego, and the superego, Sigmund Freud's theory. Y'all stay tuned for a great presentation. I'm ready to kill it. Let's go. This is like the first time we're recording on camera, so we're going to see how it goes. I'm talking about some self-efficacy, you know, because it's like the key factor to life, and a lot of people don't realize that, right? And so if you look right here, I got, I got you in the light, and I got we in the dark. And I got it like that for a reason. Throughout your struggles and your pain, you, know, it might always, you might always be with yourself. But then when you're in the we and you're in the dark, you know, you can't do it alone. You know, and people, you know, they often get that misconstrued that they think that they can just do everything by themselves, right? And so you always need that help when you're in the dark. Remember that for future reference. Look for the help. Don't just ignore the help. Don't be like, oh, I can, I can do this alone. Find help. And have a purpose that's bigger than yourself that is derived from your what? Your self-efficacy. Our belief is everything. This is what controls our locus of control, right? This is what controls um, our life, you know? So we can dictate our life uh, the ways that we want it to go. I want to give you an example for my personal self-efficacy. You know, this was this was back in, in June. I was talking to my counselor and I was like, hey, I'm kind of deciding between psychology and chiropractic, but you know, I really want to be a chiropractor. That's kind of where I'm, I'm headed towards. And he was like, uh, you know you're gonna have to take anatomy class and gonna be like 16 hours uh, studying a week and three hours a day and if you want to get a really good grade L little did he know you know my self-efficacy is like all the way up here you know my first exam a my second exam a my third exam a my fourth exam a my fifth exam a uh, you know I ace every single exam because I believed no I'm not bragging I because <laughs> she's in my I would love to do an A on that But it derived from believing in myself every time. I literally told myself every single time. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to go ace this test today. Like, I literally walked into every single class, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to go ace this test today. And I didn't have any doubt in my mind. And, and I just want to, any, any, raise your hand in here. If your mother is still working a 9-to-5 job, if your dad is still working a 9-to-5 job, if your parents aren't doing what they love right now, Okay, just about 80% of the people. What is the age of retirement in America? Does anybody know? 68. 68, okay, so around like 61 is where they actually retire. 67, they can't even grab their social security until they turn 67. And, and, and what is the average life expectancy? 80, in America? 79. For women, it's 81 in America. For men, it's 77. Around the world, it's 75 for women. Uh, 70 for men. Right now you have the opportunity to literally change your parents' life and you really want them to work all the way until they're 60, 61 years old to 67 years old and then they have 13 years to live. When you have enough motivation, you have enough self-advocacy, you have enough energy to accomplish every goal that you want in your life. And one thing they don't teach you in school is your dreams. One thing they do not teach you is they, they just want you to abide by the system. They want you to Okay, I'm just going to go to school and, and that one dream, that one idea that you had, like you, you completely forget about it because you get basically brainwashed by uh, all the school systems and hey, the only thing I got to do is, you know, just go and uh, I got to make my parents proud and, you know, it's going to, you know, make your parents proud by going after your dream and doing what you love to do, right? If being selfish, if you're not thinking, if you're sticking in the eye, you know, if you're an individual, you're going to get tired, right? But, you know, if you stop being selfish and you start doing it for that person, for that mom, for your dad, for the person that's working at 9 to 5, bro, you're going to get there. So, yo, know, the id is, uh, you know, is I have to eat now, right? It's, boom, it's, you open the fridge, you know what I'm saying, you see the chocolate cake, you like, oh my God, chocolate cake with the buttercream frosting, ooh, and the cherry on top, you know what I'm saying, you grab the lid. <laughs> but that's your it, you know what I'm saying? It's your natural desire, immediate. And then, you know, half of us here, you know, we, we get sexually stimulated and we're like, oh, yeah, here, let me go hit up this person here. Hey, that was something you can do right now. Or, or, you, it's not, you know? And then, and then your ego comes in a way and your ego's like, yeah, man, you know, you'll, you'll be good if you eat the cake now. Like, that way you don't have to worry about it later. You'll be good if you just, you know, hit up this woman, but, you know, you, your desire is going to be met. You're gonna be good, you know? Like, it's, it has no morals. Your ego is what gets in the way of your success. The super ego comes in, and the super ego knows what's right, always. And it's got such little power, it's one-tenth of your mind. 
Ah, the super ego controls. It's got such little control, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a lot of strength. You know, when you go and hit up that woman or you go and hit up that man to go uh, supply your sexual needs, you're not thinking about your future wife that you could have a beautiful relationship with. And you're not thinking about how you probably gonna have to explain to your wife, you know, I, I can't love you as much as I did this and this and this and this. And I'm speaking from experience because I actually had to go through a lot of sexual encounters throughout my high school career. It's, it's really not like a good thing because it hardens your heart. And over time, you're, just, you're not able to be that person that you should strive to be. And so that's why I always say, you gotta really start listening to your conscious mind. You gotta not let your ego get in the way of your ultimate goal. And that's why you gotta have that self-efficacy, get your why up. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this for my family, my future wife. I'm doing this because if I eat this, you know, if I eat this cake right now out of the fridge, I'm probably gonna get a, uh, a closer chance to getting diabetes, it's a closer chance to, uh, you're laughing, but see, that's, that's your id, that's your ego getting in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, you know, you're getting lazy on your You're not gonna get a better sleep because you ate that cake. You gotta start making the right decision. You gotta start listening to that super ego. It's James, I'm JG1. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are checks and on 100%. I mean, personally, I don't think that you can 100% just be this perfect human being. But I think, I think like perfectionism is uh, in a sense of you're constantly, continually growing, you're constantly making changes, and you're giving yourself the little leeway. You know, you work hard six days, and on the seventh day, you know, you're resting, you're taking care of yourself. You can have your cheat day, eat what you want, like you know. But definitely, I say most of the time, you gotta stay on point. So.